This is an India Today exclusive. It's not just India that has been concerned about fugitives, wanted men of India uh, finding safe haven in Canada. Bangladesh is another country that has been struggling with uh, many fugitives, particularly Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the, founder, the, the father of uh, Bangladesh uh, as a nation. Uh, his killers in Canada too, and they have been trying very hard to get them extradited. To discuss more on the recent India-Canada row and the situation between Bangladesh and Canada, I'm being joined by none other than the Foreign Minister of Bangladesh himself, Minister A.K. Abdul Momin. Thank you so much for joining us here on India Today, sir. Thank you very much, and I also thank your audience and your viewers. Right, sir. Let's begin with uh, the India-Canada row. How do you look at this entire row between India and Canada over wanted men who are in India who have been killed in Canada? Canada alleges that there isn't an involvement. India has rejected those allegations. Where do you see this? How do you see the row in itself with visas being suspended, ties almost on a breakdown? You see, we have very good relationship rock solid relation with India, and also we have good relation with Canada. Both countries are friends. Now, I don't know the detail of this issue uh, between India and Canada, uh, but I know that, you know, we have a problem with Canada. And that's about, we have one of the killers of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, you just mentioned, you see, his killer is having a good life in Canada. He has been there, and uh, we have been trying to, we have been requesting Canadian government to send back that self-confessed self kill, self killer of Bangabandhu, our father of the nation. But unfortunately, right. the Canada is not uh, listening to us. And they have come up with varieties of excuses. So we also went to the Canadian court to understand what is his status, because he's staying in Canada for a long time, and we want to know whether he's a Canadian citizen or not. So we, uh, we started a case in the Canadian court, and Canadian, you know, the honorable judges made a you know, verdict. They said that Canadian government has no reason not to disclose his status, but yet Canadian government is not telling us anything, neither sending. Only thing they tell us that they have a law that any individual, if he's, if he's sent back to his own country, and if there is a capital punishment in that country, then the, that part, as part of that law, they cannot serve that individual. So we are saying that Canada must not be, Canada is a government, is a government to rule of law, they believe in legal system. Canada must not be hub of all the murderers. The murderers, they can go to Canada and take shelter and they can have wonderful life. While those who he killed and their relatives, they are suffering. So we have been asking Canadian government to deport that no children. They know it, but unfortunately, currently they not, don't even uh, you know, talk to us on this issue. Right, sir. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, let's just talk about Noor Chaudhary's case. Noor Chaudhary, Rashid Chaudhary, two people who had escaped uh, after killing uh, the father of the nation of Bangladesh, uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, fled. One uh, fled to the United States of America, the other to Canada. Noor Chaudhary is the one who is in Canada. He's now currently in his 70s. Uh, but in terms of the conversations, around 2019, there was some hope that the Canadians were listening and there could be some resolution. Uh, that did not really happen. Is capital punishment the only reason why you think Canada is not extraditing? Or is there reluctance that you see within Canada in sending back these, uh, these people who are wanted in other countries, be it India or for that matter, Bangladesh? Yeah, so once you had one and you send it to Bangladesh, we got it. But the problem is with Canada, they have one after another excuses, and that's what is not understandable. They have their law, but law must not protect a killer. Law must not protect, 
you know, these bad guys. But unfortunately, Canada is doing it. Now, let, let me tell you, it is very unfortunate when our father of the nation was killed in 1975. Then we had military government one after the other. And those military government not only rewarded these uh, killers, they posted mm -hmm. them in foreign missions and in good jobs. So they live there and then they also, um, the military government passed a law that you cannot sue the killers. So the family members, they cannot sue the killers, the murderers. But it took almost 21 years for the family members, particularly our current prime minister, who is the eldest daughter of Bangabandhu um, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. She had to fight for 21 years to come to power, to chain that indemnity, this, you know, Vagas indemnity, very criminal in, the, in, in, once that has been repealed, only then we started the due process of law. We have gone through a due process and those guys who are the killers of our father of the nation, they have been convicted by the highest court in Bangladesh. And we have submitted all the details to the Canadian government that the process was uh, fair, judicious, and it followed all the procedures and they had the right to defend themselves. But unfortunately, uh, these killers took the shelter in Canada. And I hope Canada, and we have two killers now, right now. One is, be, uh, is sheltered in Canada, Noor Choudhury. Other one is Rashid Choudhury. These two killers are even good life, although their family are still suffering. Right, you're right. In 2009, uh, the Supreme Court of Bangladesh sentenced 11 convicts to death. Five uh, were hanged, but uh, these, are, these are the ones who are still living a good life, like you said. What is the status of his citizenship? Is he a citizen of Canada? Why is Canada protecting him? Because he just went on a visitor's visa and has been extending that. Uh, Canada has not accorded him refugee status. So what's the status of Noor Chaudhary and why aren't they really sending him back? If, is we it just know. Canada punishment? We don't know the status of Noor Chaudhary. To understand, to find out the status, we submitted a case to the Canadian court and it took a couple of years. After that, Canadian judges, honorable judges, gave a verdict. And they said the Canadian government is under no obligation not to disclose the status of new Chaudhary. And since then, we have been requesting the Canadian government to, uh, to tell us his status. Till now, the Canadian government has been refusing to disclose the status, in spite of the fact that their own court made the judgment. Could there be a change, sir? That, but in uh, case of, let me tell you, in case of Rashid Chudri, who is in mm -hmm. USA, that's much clearer. Rashid Chudri uh, got the, you know, US uh, asylum citizenship by submitting all false documents. Mm -hmm. And since he submitted all false documents, in USA there is a rule that if you get immigration by submitting all the false documents, then your case can be reviewed. So US government, we have, we submitted a request to the US government that Sasha Chaudhary submitted all the false, he's a murderer. So the US government um, you know, has been uh, uh, reviewing his case. Right now, it is with the Attorney General Office in USA, but it's taking too much time for the review. But we hope that the US government will review it and will deport him to Bangladesh, as they did. They did. The U.S. government sent another murderer, Mohyuddin, a few years mm -hmm. ago, when they found out that he was a murderer, and therefore they sent him to Bangladesh. And we hope that the Rashid Chaudhary, who is also staying in USA, the U.S. government will deport this guy uh, to face justice. Right, sir. Is there room for the death sentence to be changed to life sentence for him to be extradited? And will Canada then agree with Bangladesh? Uh, in our, the our judiciary is very independent and government cannot intervene in there. But he has a scope for life sentence. If he comes back to Bangladesh, both Noor Chaudhary and Ashur Chaudhary, they come back to Bangladesh, they can ask for a mercy petition to the president of the country. And President may, you know, grant them 
uh, grant the, uh, the mercy petition and can change uh, from life, I mean, execution to life sentence. That president has that prerogative. In and such a scenario, right, sir. Pardon? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, they, they have that privilege to do it. Canadian government knows about it to told them that he has still one more option. If he come back and then he submit a mercy petition to the president, hmm. president may allow him life sentence uh, instead of execution. He has that prerogative. In such a scenario, do you have any hopes from the Canadian administration, from Trudeau government? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm a very optimist man, optimist man. And I'm always hoping against hope. And I believe that one day Canadian government will change that rule because now Canada is becoming a hub of all the murderers of all the other across the nation. I know that if anybody is a murderer, they try to take shelter in Canada under varieties of false pretexts. And in the process, Canada is becoming a hub of murderers. That should not, Canada is a lovely country. It's a great country, but this particular law is affecting Canadian reputation. So Canada should not allow killers, you know, uh, provide them a safe home in Canada. Uh, they should change the law. Not just simple murderers, they are political They assassins. will change the law in the due process. All right, um, before I let you go, my final larger perspective. Now, in all the intelligence sharing, we see a lot of cooperation between US and Canada, the United Kingdom, the five eyes, uh, allies and partners. Do you think uh, they have aligned themselves and geared their entire intelligence sharing to the disadvantage of countries like Bangladesh and India when it comes to ensuring that justice is served uh, for, for countries such as India and Bangladesh, uh, who have been struggling and fighting to uh, to take on or to at least have uh, either Khalistan terrorists in our case or uh, political assassins in your case uh, to to really bring them to book to bring them to justice. You know, you we have a very good relation in India. There has been some you know people who was taking shelter in Bangladesh and fighting to overthrow the Indian government or separatist movement started. So when we caught them in Bangladesh, uh, we our judicial system tried them, and then we hand over uh, those criminals to India. And once they went back to Kind India, Kindia also you know completed a due process of law, and they suffered few years in prison for their and eventually they uh, got out of the prison and having good life. You see, one uh, one or two guys I remember, one was Chatia. Who was a you know separatist uh, leader of the separatist movement? He stayed there. Uh, we sent him to India because we have good agreement, and we don't encourage any terrorist uh, in our country. So if, if there is any terrorist, we definitely will uh, catch that one and we send it to their country war. Right. But what about US, UK, Canada? How are they looking at our terrorists? Do you think they are aligning themselves against India and Bangladesh? That one, I don't know the details of it. Uh, I'm ab abroad, so I I'm in Washington now, right now. Yes, so I didn't ask, and my colleagues are not around, so I didn't know much about it. Only yeah. I see some scroll, something in the television, but, uh, you know, it, it is sad. I think we all countries together should have a policy, all countries, that we will not allow any terrorist, you know. In Bangladesh, a zero tolerance to terrorists. If a terrorist mm -hmm. of any country, we'll catch him and we'll send him to the country of origin for facing the justice. So we believe the other countries should work together in partnership and they must not allow any terrorist, uh, you know, uh, safe home. Final two questions, sir. Do you think Canada, in the name of human rights, is ignoring um, the bigger concern, the larger concern of terrorism? I, I didn't get it. Canada? That Canada, in the, Canada, in the name of human rights, that they have rights, they have they, that this is violation of human rights, in the name of human rights, is protecting terrorists. It's very, it's very sad indeed. The concept of human rights is being abused by many people at many times, you see. And uh, 
uh, this is very unfortunate uh, because this uh, has become at times an excuse for some people to protect killers and murderers and the uh, you know the terrorists and that must not uh, that should be changed and the governments under the banner of human rights must not abuse this concept of human rights he of course he has his right but he got, must go through a process of a judicial system to see whether he's a murderer or he's a killer or whether he's a terrorist and once it, uh, that is done uh, I think that should be the best process to eliminate terrorists from the uh, from across the globe. Final you question see, to you, sir. Right. Final question to you, sir. Uh, Minister Mohan, the fact that there are concerns that India and Bangladesh have with regards to terrorists, how much do you think Pakistan uses them against India and Bangladesh? Whether it's Khalistani terrorists who are funded or supported by Pakistani elements in Canada, or for that matter, uh, political assassins such as uh, Nur Chaudhary living there may be, in, uh, uh, may be connected to uh, ISI officials since he himself was a military officer in Bangladesh when he uh, killed Bangabandhu. You see, we believe that all assassins, all murderers, all terrorists must face you know, due process of law. They should face justice. And all countries should cooperate. Doesn't matter, you see, you see, all countries, these are some fundamental things. In those fundamental things, other small national interests they should overlook. And here we should all be together. That any murderer, any assassin, any terrorist, they should face justice. Does not matter whether Pakistani or Indian or Bangladeshi or, you know, any country, Canadian, all terrorists must face justice. Right. On that note, uh, Minister Thank Mormon, thank you so much for joining us here on India Today and sharing perspective on how countries should be looking at terrorists' political well, assassins. I hope I could answer you because I didn't hear everything very accurately. <laughs> no, no, you did. You did. Uh, just as a question on Pakistan's involvement, it seemed like you just wanted to uh, you just wanted to talk about the larger picture. But is there any comment that you want to make about Pakistan's involvement in in, in terrorism and supporting these terrorists? Uh, is, is there a specific comment that you want to make on Pakistan's involvement in supporting these terrorists? Yeah, we discourage all countries to you know, pro protect terrorists. We don't want any country should be a safe haven for any terrorist, doesn't matter what. They should, every country should come together, as I said, in these issues. Terrorists, murderers, uh, those uh, must not be given any safe home. Thank you. All right. On that note, Minister Mohan, thank you so much for joining us here on India Today. Thank you. Thank you.